Birmingham Changing Futures Together exists to create better support for people with multiple and complex needs through systems change. Now let's start with the Yellow Brick Road to Recovery. I'd like to tell you about the Lead Worker Peer Mentor Service that ran in Birmingham for four and a half years. We engaged with over 300 clients and saved over three million pounds. Imagine you find yourself suddenly homeless. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Wisdom has it that there's a safe place to sleep and look after your health. But which is the way? Where do I go? To the great and wonderful wizard himself for a simple housing needs assessment. Just head for the city centre. But it's not that simple. Depending on circumstances, we may not be able to offer accommodation directly. Help is contingent on arriving as early in the day as possible. Your housing needs assessment can take a very long time. Ensure you come prepared for a long wait to bring food and drink and make childcare arrangements. Imagine you had support, a lead worker to help navigate the maze of services. Hi Dorothy, I'm here to advocate on your behalf and ensure you're supported. I can address barriers to assessment, I can reduce questions asked and I can help you settle in. And not just me, how about some peer support who can relate to your predicament? With lived experience of homelessness and mental ill health. Problem drug and alcohol use. A history of offending. We know how it is and what you're going through. Together, we'll get you home, Dorothy. The Lead Worker Peer Mentor Model was set up to have uh, a lead worker that had extensive knowledge of services existing and the peer mentor was from lived experience and the idea was to put two together and make a perfect team. Well, it, it, it was a perfect team. I could help coordinate services and understand services but I could never have that conversation with the client because I haven't been there, I haven't been on the streets, I haven't been in addiction, I haven't had to go through recovery services. The peer mentors will have either experienced homelessness, mental health, offending, and or addiction. I also had a process then of like uh, children's homes, um, young offenders institutes and ultimately prison in the long term. Um, get involved in all sorts of things, you know, uh, criminal offences, drugs, you know, that sort of stuff, uh, stealing, shoplifting, breaking, plate entry and all that sort of stuff. We've gone through the system, you know, I, I always say to people that the knowledge which I do have, you know, um, I, you know, I've got a master's degree in life. When you're talking or helping somebody who has the same needs as you did, it's easier to understand where they're coming from. Imagine you arrive at the hostel after a difficult journey, 105 beds all under one roof. Without support, could you go inside? Come on Toto, let's go back to our doorway. We've stayed here. I know it's scary, but it's just a step on the road. Glinda helped us. Now we've all got our own places. Let's go in together. Are you alright, love? <laughs> there is a women's hostel you might find more comfortable. No, thank you, I've got this. So there's one direct access hostel that if you're in dire need and you need a bed for the night, there's one place that you can go, one. Whereas before, I'd say there's at least 15, and that happened overnight. So the barriers to services, for example, sending somebody an appointment who's, um, who hasn't got an address, who's a rough sleeper, who misses appointments, but had a temporary address, for example. So it's just layer upon layer of barriers and, and almost discrimination, I would say, against people who are, who are rough sleeping on the streets. I've been trying now for two weeks to just get someone to pick the phone up on behalf of someone I'm, I'm advocating for. If I was in chaos, I wouldn't have the inclination to hang on the phone for a half an hour. So someone's starting out on the journey now I have real empathy for because it's a, night, a total nightmare. Say someone comes out of prison and they need to maybe get themselves back on a methadone prescription or, or their mental health needs looking at. Um, but yet, they, but they've got to be here and they've got to be there and in two places at the same time. On the day of release, you have just four to five hours to navigate a dizzying checklist of tasks all over the city to do. Probation assessment, drug treatment assessment, accommodation assessment, library benefits online, mental health appointments, shopping for food. Um, one wrong step 
one missed probation appointment and it's a breach. Back to square one. Missed accommodation assessment. Do not pass go. The staff have gone. Everything points to a night sleeping rough. But with the right support... Done. 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 There's no need to sit in the queue for a housing assessment. We found supported housing, we've brought your food parcels and there's bedding in this rucksack. We'll get your prescription on the way to probation and then take you to your new gap. Get you settled in. Oh, and here's a day saver. I was scripted methadone and got just a day's dose on release. Without Glinda booking me in at drug services, I'd have fallen straight off my script. I would have been ordered to probation office anywhere in the city, depending on the address they had on record at the start of my sentence. Glinda made me aware of my right to request the one closest to me. For other commissioners, I think they need to look at the immense amount of money that we're able to save, but secondary, the lives we were able to save and the lives we were able to improve. Five years ago, there was a top 10 list of the most notorious offenders or nuisances. The top 10 that were on that list four years ago are not there today because they are all housed. Um, majority of them are living in their own accommodation. They're either in recovery or they are comfortably scripted. So without that support, I think the death rates for people with multiple and complex needs are so significantly higher than the average population. So we're starting to see the repercussions of that service disappearing and we are hoping to promote then what we have learned so other services are encouraged to embrace that model. Listen to the people who've been there. If you listen to us, it's bleeding obvious what needs to be done because we are experts on uh, how you can spend your money wisely and it's, it is a win-win situation. So what's different about our service was the fact that we had peer mentors, paid member of staff with lived experience that have been where our clients have been. They were able to talk to them on their level and engage them far better than staff without lived experience. What we found from speaking to the clients was that that's what kept them engaged throughout the service, sometimes for over four years. Another thing that the client said was that they really had a deep distrust and sometimes fear of those services and being able to speak to people that had gone through what they'd been through and come out the other end enabled them to have that trust and start attending those services what they hadn't done for years. We also had lead workers that looked at the client's care package holistically, not just as individual issues that had to be dealt with separately. They looked at that person as a human, not only in all of their issues, but all their assets as well, to make sure that they could also do the things that they enjoyed doing. A unique thing that our programme has was that we didn't have a particular time frame that the clients had to work to. So there was no 16 weeks to make sure they were cured of their drug addiction. We were a four and a half year programme, and they were happy to stay on that programme for as long as it took. The timescales were made with the client. One of the unique things about our service was that we never expelled any of our clients. Numerous clients came and went, they disengaged and they came back at a time and a place that was better for them. We never expelled anybody. Some services, if you miss two or three appointments, you'll be expelled, meaning that some of the clients will slide back down that snake on the snake and ladders board and go right back to square one. None of our clients had that pressure on them. Over the four years, the Lead Worker Peer Mentor Service created overall savings of £3.2 million reduced criminal convictions leading to savings of £2.1 million, reduced mental health inpatient episodes leading to savings of £484,000, reduced evictions leading to savings of £411,000, reduced hospital attendances leading to savings of £402,000. If you've liked what you've seen and are interested in knowing more about the Lead Worker Peer Mentor Service, then please contact Birmingham Changing Futures together.